How you guys doing? I want to talk to you really quickly about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What is the baptism of the Holy Spirit? In so many words, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is... So let's break this down. So first of all, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a second work from the initial infilling of the Spirit. So when you're saved, you are, you are filled with God's Spirit. So the moment you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior... At the altar, the Holy Spirit comes into your heart, comes into your life and infills you, becomes one with the, your spirit. The spirit of God and your spirit become one spirit. Uh, that's what happens at salvation. So you have the indwelling presence. You're saved. Has nothing to do with salvation. Even though there are some denominations, apostolic denominations that teach that you have to be speaking tongues and you have to do these things to be saved. But that's not what the Bible said. The Bible says that all those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It talks about, it says that all you have to do is believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you'll be saved. That's all the Bible requires for a person to be saved. It's not speaking in tongues. The, the apostles of Jesus Christ were saved before, um, the, before the book of Acts. So the, 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 before the book of Acts, the, 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 they were saved already. So this has nothing to do with salvation. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, though, is different altogether because it is when God's Spirit overflows in you. It's a double portion. It's when God's Spirit over, it's like a cup that's filled to the brim. And that water is poured in that cup and it overflows. That's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is. The baptism, the submerging of the Spirit of God on your life. To where, and, and the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues according to Acts 2 and all throughout the, the New Testament. When, when people were baptized in the Holy Spirit, they spoke in other tongues. That's where we get charismatic church, uh, the Pentecostal experience or the charismatic church from. This is not just about speaking in tongues. The baptism of the Holy Spirit has, is not about speaking in tongues necessarily. It's the evidence, but it is not the only evidence. The evidence is power. Jesus said that you shall be endued with power. And so when they spoke in tongues, they also prophesied and had power. They had power over demons. They had power to cast out demons. They had power to heal the sick. They had power to raise the dead. They had power uh, to overcome sin. They had power to overcome uh, persecution. So the, the back to the Holy Spirit is more than just how to about shah. You know, it's more than just about praying in tongues. It's about the power of God coming on your life. And so many uh, charismatics are not really Pentecostal or many Pentecostals are not really Pentecostal because they have tongues, but they don't have power. And so we have a lot of dead Pentecostal and charismatic churches, and that's not what God meant either. So the 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 the, the fruit of the baptism of the Holy Spirit in your life is a life overflowing with the power of the Holy Spirit. It's a life filled with the fruits of the Spirit. It's a life filled with joy and peace, because those are also signs that you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, is that your life begins to line up with the Word of God in a greater way. And so you begin to see the supernatural in your life. You begin to see and yes, you begin to speak in tongues. And that part, that speaking in tongues is the prayer language of God. And I did a teaching on that. But I, I want to talk to you about the fact that every Christian is supposed to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because I've heard churches teach that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is only for certain Christians. It's a gift. And they compare that gift to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where it talks about the gift of praying in tongues. That gift is not the same gift. The gift of, that they're talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is the gift of interpretation of tongues. It is not the same, a diverse tongue. It's not the same, uh, uh, the infilling gift that comes on you when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit gives you your own prayer language. That is not the same gift mentioned there. So God's desire... It's not that there be Methodists that don't speak in tongue or Baptist. That's why we have the charismatic renewal where God poured out his spirit on Methodist, Presbyterian. God's will is for every believer to experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the infilling of the spirit. Because when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you begin to cast out devils. You begin to heal the sick. You begin to walk in greater authority. You begin to see the fruits of the spirit operating in the greater in your life. You begin to walk in more uh, uh, joy, peace, uh, uh, the gifts of the spirit begin activated. The tw the nine gifts of the spirit begin to be activated in a greater way in your life. This is what the baptism of the Holy Spirit produces, a life of power. If you are a charismatic or a Pentecostal that say, I speak in tongues, so uh, that's what shows that I'm Pentecostal because, no, 
The baptism of the Holy Spirit comes to bring power. It comes to bring power, 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 power to see our city shaken, power to see your job shaken, power to live holy. This is what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is. And so if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, this is how you get it. You ask for it. It's easy. Just receive it, repent of your sins, uh, uh, and just ask for it and then begin to speak in tongues by faith. I just release that anointing over you right now. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I want you to subscribe to our channel and like it. God bless you.